to go out over the sea and then come back in over the beach towards 1.6 as an uphill gradient um, and interestingly enough you'll find that we've got three guns pointing at us. My name is Tim Palmer and I fly a Jodel DR1050 out of a farm strip in East Anglia. Welcome back to the vlog and a big thank you to all my new subscribers. I really appreciate your support. I'm trying to maintain my weekly upload during lockdown and give you something to watch and at the same time something for us to look forward to. Please like and comment as it makes it all worthwhile. Well, I wanted to uh, leave filming this until this week so that I could come across and do a little bit in front of uh, my old emerald, uh, looking a little bit sorry for itself at the moment. But uh, this was my very first aircraft, and as I said last week, this was where I had two engine failures. So, yeah. A long time ago, probably before the majority of you were, were born, and I think it was the 19th of July, uh, 1980, we picked this one up from uh, Taunton, and we were heading back here to Nayland. Things have been going reasonably well. Um, she was flying nicely, fairly fast, um, and we got as far as the Lee Valley. Uh, over the top of the first lakes she gave just one little surge um, I'm gonna make some silly noises but it's the best way of describing it I mean basically the engine was going it was one stop one blip um, and we looked at each other we wondered what on earth was going on but I checked to make sure that my hand wasn't sweaty or, or, or anything else, had a quick scan, everything else seemed to be okay. Uh, flew a little bit further, and as the time progressed, so the amount of time the engine ran got shorter, and after a, a short while, it did it again. But this time, the amount of silence was longer and the engine run got shorter. And this got worse and worse and worse until it was going And we thought, right, we're going to need to find somewhere. So looking ahead of us, there was a very large open space. We were lucky, it was North Weald. So we lined up on what was the, well, what is the short runway. Uh, bearing in mind this was a long time ago and at the last moment we saw that there were glider cables stretched across in front of it so we turned a left hand downwind and as we turned on to the final the engine went and then stopped so the actual landing was a dead stick landing but having said that it was a dead stick landing on North Weald's very large tarmac runway. We had a quick look around, we took the cowlings off, uh, we stripped down the fuel lines, and a little tiny piece of plastic came out of the fuel line. And we thought, great, this is, this is it, this is the fault, this is the culprit put it back together and we bought some fuel from there and we topped up. Uh, engine started fine, we climbed up at that stage. Um, Stansted zone was nothing like what it is now. I think we climbed to about four and a half thousand feet just to make sure and then flew from North Weald back here to Naylan in probably, I think it was about 25 minutes. Landed no problem at all. Um, didn't think much about it. We started looking at it closely because it was a new purchase. Uh, my 
inspector at the time had given it a once over, but when we came back into here, Jerry was looking at the elevator and Tommy, who was one of the inspectors at the time, said he didn't like the smell of it very much. So he suggested that Jerry, who I'd gone into partnership with, take the skin off and just have a look underneath. And without a word of a lie, as he cut down the trailing edge and peeled back the second eye, every single wooden component in the elevator just fell to the floor. It was total wood glue failure. But it wasn't the end of the story. Well, we spent 10 months rebuilding it. <laughs> For a while, the wings were down the hall of the bungalow that we lived in at the time. Um, but yeah, got it back together and we were flying it really happily. But a year later, I was flying over Colchester, coming back into Nathan, but flying over Colchester when exactly the same thing came. It was surging, blipping exactly the same as it had done before. Um, so I dead sticked it back into Nayland and we thought, well, whatever it was, we didn't sort it out last time. We found that tiny piece of plastic, we assumed that that was it. But when we had a thorough investigation, we actually found that the finger filter in the bottom of the tank had actually collapsed and gone into the fuel line. And it seemed, transpired when we did the calculations, that as long as we had more than six gallons of fuel in the tank, there was enough of a pressure to put through it. But as soon as it got less than six, that's the point at which the engine was surging because it wasn't getting enough fuel. So it was actually quite an easy remedy in the end. It was simply fitting a new finger filter and from that point on, it was no problem. But I have to say, in far, as far as confidence is concerned, every time I picked up a bit of carb ice or whatever and that engine surged, I was already looking for a field, which is basically why we moved it on. But as, <laughs> as I said earlier, that is over 40 years ago now. But that's the story of the engine failures with our old Emerald. This is a lovely trip for us to a great little airfield on the North Norfolk coast with a very interesting museum. John had just bought BFOP and this was a first flight in it. As far as I'm concerned, I think the wind is going to be coming in from this direction here. Um, therefore, that means that you split the difference between 16, which is 617 meters, and 03, which is 380. It is very short, and I'm not sure about the condition of it. I suggest that we come in over the top, we fly a left handed circuit, we go out over the sea, and then come back in over the beach towards 16. There's an uphill gradient, um, and interestingly enough, you'll find that we've got three guns pointing at us, at us as we as we approach. Um, safety comm, so it's one three five decimal four seven five. As I say, that's where I think the wind is. Uh, we'll find out when we get there. There is a windsock next to the caravan, which is in the intersection there between those two runways. So, see how we go. Duncan and Eric flew in the D-18 and it wasn't long after this trip that Eric bought BFOP from John. I recorded sound directly onto the camera but my headset and the intercom just weren't playing ball and it quality was atrocious so I've decided to take that off and just play with a bit of background music.
enjoy that. Pretty nifty, really, isn't it? Pardon? I said it's pretty nifty, isn't it, really? I don't suppose you sort of saw the attack guns as we uh, <laughs> came over the first time. We'll feel we can smile. Thank you.